there we go. <laughs> I wanted to play more. Um, oh, my camera's on. Hi. Hello, everyone. Um, I wanted to play more Stanley Parable. Oh, fuck, I've only did. I had to stop my recording because I couldn't see my mouse and I was wondering why, so I exited the game. But before I'd done that, the only reason I realised I couldn't see my mouse is because I was trying to set the time. It is now 15.25. Oops. I'll put it to 26. PM, yes. 3.26, your favourite time of the day. I should have put 12.30, actually. Simply not resist giving me the correct time again. After all, I know how much you enjoy setting the time correctly. Okay, now I'm curious how accurate 3.26 PM is. Let's use another slider to find out. How accurate is 3.26? Bang on, sir. Bang on. You know, I have to say, regardless of the accuracy of the clock, I'm having a great time adjusting these settings. I feel like I'm learning more about you and how you like things to be set. It's good to collect data. I wish I had more sliders. We've gone through all the sliders I have. Perhaps I can invent some new sliders to gather new data on you. Shouldn't be too hard. Yeah. Let me whip a couple of new ones up. Should be ready the next time you boot the game. right -o. Yeah, Stanley Parable 2 now, isn't it? Begin the game! Oh man, I'll finish my Dr. Pepper. This is the Shush. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? I wonder if I can Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Do Perhaps the clicky the thing. And the chaos all seemed to melt away as Stanley embraced the bucket. Oh, please. Are you really just doing this for the achievement? Click a door five times. Is that all that you think an achievement is worth? No, 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 no. I can't just... Nah, I don't think it's going to do any different. ...little effort. A measly five clicks. Now suppose you were to click the door 20 times. I would say that's the kind of effort that warrants recognition. No. If it said something about the bucket, I would have continued on, but... Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Still no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and <coughs> comfort now. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find answers. Get Chris out of the broom closet. Oh, broom closet's getting in, then I wonder what happens with the bucket. Oh, Stanley. Can you feel it? The broom closet. It wants the bucket. You can feel that, can't you? The aura of jealousy? It's as clear as day. This broom closet believes it deserves the bucket. I can really feel it now. It's a bucket. It belongs in a broom closet. That's what the broom closet is trying to say here. It's supposed to go with the other cleaning supplies. Good for you, Stanley. Don't give in. Don't hand over the bucket. I know how hard it must be, given the pressure that the broom closet is putting on your shoulders right now, but you have to be strong. This is your bucket. This is your companion and lifelong friend. You can't hand it over. Oh, no. We're getting into name-calling now, it seems. Is this how low the broom closet has sunk that it has to resort to this stream of petty insults simply in order to get you to hand over the bucket? Stanley, I never liked this broom closet for a variety of reasons. But even this is worse than I had imagined. And wait, now the broom closet has the gall to imply that you and the bucket are not truly deep and lasting friends? That your relationship is purely superficial and convenient? That your life is so banal and meaningless that you'd feel the same sort of kinship towards any inanimate object which happened to lay in your path in an even partially enticing manner? Well, I never. Go on, Stanley. Lay into it. Really tell the broom closet off for its demeaning comments. Expand on the wide variety of experiences you and the bucket have shared together. Go through each of them point by point. Share your journal entries detailing the rich emotional landscape of your feelings for the bucket as they have changed and evolved over the years. 
let him have it. Okay, I've got you something which I think will help settle this debate once and for all. Here we go. <laughs> yes. Now it's settled. No more debate, no more discussion. Take a hike, broom closet, with all your meandering philosophical diatribes about the nature of cleaning supplies and their Is there really even any cleaning supplies there, the natural like... order of things. Tui. Fuck you, broom closet. All right, I've got a second sticker back here, and I'm going to slap it on as well because I think it's appropriate. You see? <laughs> I feel that it works because the sticker is also a bucket. That, if you're ever unsure whether the thing you're holding is a bucket or not, you can look down at this sticker and say to yourself, Ah, it's a bucket. There really is a wide variety of application coming to a staircase. Oh, shit, she didn't walk through. walked upstairs to the boss's office. Bastard. Toilet time. Whoa. Can I has? Found one oh. of them. One of the miniature Stanley figurines. Remember, no reward for collecting all of these. Only the intrinsic pleasure of a job well done. You can't buy that sort of happiness, Stanley. God knows I've tried. So, I implore you to savor each and every moment you come across one of these beautiful figurines. <coughs> Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire if not for the soothing presence of the bucket. Even now, in his darkest of hours, did the bucket's warmth and guiding light pierce the dark clouds of confusion and chaos. It would be with him always. The bucket would. And he knew it. The two of them were inseparable. At this point, Stanley was so absorbed in the tender spiritual connection he shared with the bucket that he didn't notice the keypad behind the boss's desk. Nor in his bliss of simply being Ooh, near the bucket on did he have any notion that the pin number for the keypad oh, was 2845. But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, 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 yes. This is certainly the most logical explanation. Oh, completely logical. Stanley! Another miniature <coughs> figurine. This, um, you know, there really must be a snappier name for these things. What about mini stands? Stanley figs? Or um, what about Stanlerines? Yes, I think I like that. Another Nobody likes that, mate. Marine under your belt. Yeah. Button. <laughs> loading, 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 loading. The elevator raced downward, plummeting towards an unknown fate. Excuse me. It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the bucket. Soothing him, comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be all right. The bucket is here for you, Stanley. Everything will be fine. What happened last time when I went back up again? No. Not yet, not yet, not yet. Stanley and the bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read, Mind Control Facility. Boom, 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 boom. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the Bucket both wondered to themselves. Oh! But just as Stanley was about to proceed further into the mind control facility, he tripped and fell over the railing and into the dark void below. Thankfully, he fell directly onto the Bucket. 
which safely cushioned his fall. Now, what to do next, Stanley wondered. Stanley and the bucket could find no way out of this enormous pit, and so eventually they decided that the best thing to do would be to simply get comfortable down here. So they set up a little couch and relaxed. <laughs> it really wasn't so bad down here, a bit cold perhaps. After some time had gone by, they installed a few shelves as well, and a sort of kitchenette that was useful for when the bucket was craving paninias. But it wasn't until the rugs and the standing lamps came in that it really started to feel like a home. In fact, after some time, Stanley realized that it had been ages since he had even thought of the mind control facility at all. He'd never gotten to fully explore what was up there, never been able to unearth the many mysteries of the mind control facility. This lack of closure began to eat at him. Soon he was dwelling on his regrets, and the state of their home slowly decayed as Stanley became withdrawn and neglected the cleaning. It unsettled the bucket deeply. Stanley wasn't usually like this. The bucket tried to reach out to him again and again, but to no avail. All Stanley could think about, all he could talk about, was going back, doing it over again, staying on the path. It was a mistake to leave the path. It was a mistake. It was a mistake. I need to do what the narrator says. I need to see the true ending. This made no sense at all to the bucket, which was simply trying to live its life down here as comfortably as possible. Yet Stanley was unconsolable. This isn't an ending. This is just a hole in the ground. <coughs> bucket sighed. True, it wasn't an ending. But it's where we happen to be. And maybe, possibly, if we accept the reality of things, maybe this will become an ending eventually. It's what the bucket was counting on. The two of them waited for a very long time. Okay, I guess that must have been an ending. <laughs> Here we are, right. What the hell? All of his co-workers were gone. Yeah, I wonder if the sticker's stay in the book. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Ooh. Yeah, the bucket's Warm sticker stay. Through Stanley's arms. With the bucket in his arms again, he was home. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was it? No. Never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. Oh wait, no. I actually want to go back to the meeting room. I was just taking a side path. The two of them detoured through the maintenance section and walked straight ahead to the opposite door. Hmm. There will be a reward for finding them all. Stop kidding yourselves. I want them so much. I want to go home. There will be cleaning wall required. Who are you? 66 lol. Oh, looks like 427. <laughs> 5 there be, just take it from me. Gotta collect them all. Some kind of game. Must be a point to this. Large room, lots of bo Ah, that would be... Okay. Uh, stairs. Both red and blue. Oh. Oh. Oh, yeah. Stanley, we must move on from this broom closet. Simply because I have no remaining stickers. If I did, you can guarantee we'd be in here for hours. But alas, no stickers. I just wanted to show off. Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Okay, I'm going back to the name of these little Stanley figurines. And now I'm torn between Stanlarines and Figlies. What do you figlies. Think, Stanley? I like Figlies. What name better encapsulates the intrinsic sense of happiness that you get from seeing a small number in the corner of your screen go up by one? Collectibles. I'm sure Sad man statues. Budget amiibos. Too wee for me. Read ups. Meow. 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 
two, eight, four, five. Let's see if he makes one in before pressing it too fast Stepping with a bucket. Into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an. But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding yes. him? Yes. This is certainly the most logical explanation. So logical, you would not believe how logical. Click the button. Okay, this time I'm not going to fall off. Stanley and the bucket walk straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the Bucket both wondered to themselves. The monitors jumped to life, and Stanley nearly dropped the Bucket in shock. Everyone in the office was being videotaped, monitored like guinea pigs. The bucket had never seen anything like this, and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, reassuring it that everything would be fine. Fired! What am I again? 427? Come on, flip back to the numbers. Nah, nothing dodgy going on. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. But don't. Was the bucket under the mind control facility's influence as well? Had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do? What kinds of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? I could question. These questions raced furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. No! He screamed into the bucket. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! He squeezed the bucket tighter. His one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one except... The so it's the fucking same. It's just they've inserted the bucket into the story. But here was the proof. It is literally what the narrator said in that ending. Control hastily inserting his own content into Ed Stanley Parable 1. Sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he and the bucket would dismantle the controls for good. Yes, yes. Two best friends, Stanley and the bucket, up against the world. Yes, yes. They high-fived in a really cool way. And the bucket made a sassy comment about taking down the system. Off. Stanley and the bucket waited in blackness. Was it over? Yes, they had done it. Stanley and the Bucket had defeated their greatest and darkest enemy, freed themselves from the tyrannical grip of the evil mind control Ooh. machine. Freedom was now mere moments away. Excitedly, <laughs> the Bucket just coming in here, Eisen. They wanted to live once they stepped through this massive door. The Bucket wanted to learn to roller skate. Yep. Stanley You're wanted a to bucket. skis in every country on Earth. Both of them wanted to begin watching a movie, any movie, but then stop it halfway through and begin watching it in reverse from the end. True, it was a simple life they envisioned, but it was one they'd lived together, with one another to lean on, to trust, to support. What? Wait. What was happening? Why had the door stopped? Was Stanley and the Bucket not about to be freed? An unbearable silence filled says my name on the bucket lingering in uncertainty until finally the truth hit Stanley square in the face this building did not want the bucket to leave even the 
facility itself recognized the incredible calming presence of the bucket needed the soothing warmth of the bucket would go to any lengths not to part with the bucket no 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 stanley can't leave this place not while he has such a precious bucket in his arms not while this building has anything to say about it stanley realized he would never again leave this very room but at least at least he has the bucket to be trapped eternally in darkness isn't really so bad, Stanley thought to himself. As long as I have my bucket with me, right? I'll be okay, won't I? Stanley gulped. Very soon now, he was about to find out. <laughs> what the hell, man? <laughs> oh my god, that's legit. What the... Ugh. All of his co-workers were gone. I watched Jack do a video. decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. He's my bucket. Stanley picked up the bucket and smiled. I wait and put so be alone again, not truly alone, not with the bucket around. Some of these computers if you don't turn them off in advance should Stanley clung the bucket to his cheek. Could his co-workers really all be gone? Have and put a waiting on them. Mm. Bonk. How did he do it? I don't, I don't remember. Whatever. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his back. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Go there. Go to the cargo lift. So now we're on the evil bucket mine control route. Um, whoop. Ooh, -wee. Ooh. You're getting close now, Stanley. You've nearly gotten all of the Figler and Marines. Very soon, nope. we'll collect the last one. We are not the calling them that, dude. Equal the second number, and that will be it. Yes. We'll be different people by then. Yes. Different in the sense that we used to have none of them. And now we have them all. You can't go back to when you had no Figler and Marines. None of us can. Let's delete the game. Can I get down? Is it going to be death? Is it going to be death? Is it going to be death? But Stanley feared that any path he walked might lead to the separation of himself and the bucket, his dearest friend. So he threw himself to his death, that they might die in one <laughs> arms. Right, okay. How deeply touching. That ain't good. <coughs> Sorry. Let's do that again, but not plummet this time. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. The good old bucket. Just Stanley and the bucket. Off on another thrilling adventure together. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his... This was not the correct way to the meeting room. But Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the MRE lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was this better than the meeting room? Yes, Stanley thought to himself. Yes, perhaps it truly was. How insightful the bucket turned out to be. That was a lot louder than I thought, sorry. I just need a drink because I've got something in my throat. <coughs> Truly, being here with the bucket was a grand adventure. Stanley reflected on all they'd been through together. First, walking through the door on the right, then walking to the lounge, then arriving at the lounge. What a thrilling journey the bucket had inspired. Thrilling indeed. Perhaps this was where the bucket felt most truly at home. Here in the employee lounge. Perhaps it's the only place a bucket can even feel at home. It's clearly an ending here, but I can't burst waiting around. Finally, on. the bucket was done being in the lounge. 
and they took the first open door on their left to get back to business. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Go there. Go to the cargo lift. Where does this lead? Where are you taking me to? Oh! Alright. I'm so confused. <laughs> Have I done this? Is this where you get the... Ooh, oh, hello. It's types. Types everywhere. it up. No matter how many times I've done it, it's always the same feeling. And the emptiness in my chest when I set it down. It doesn't make sense. There's no explanation for it. I still haven't figured out why I see the world so differently when this bucket is in my arms. Is this supposed to be Stanley Why talking? Everything feels so... What do I do with this treasure? I can... I can monetize it. Yes. It's unthinkable the amounts of money people will pay for even just an hour with the bucket. This is my golden ticket. But I have to be careful because as soon as this gets out, there's going to be a target on my back. Even now, I don't know who might be trying to get What's that? Who's there? Pardon? <laughs> See, I can do monster noises too. We good? There's a fake ending, because that loaded real fast, bro. Sitting there, Stanley wondered to himself. Minutes? Days? Centuries? Did something crucial happen while my senses were turned? He made a note to be more careful with time from now on. Hmm. Where are we going today? The bucket asked. Stanley just smiled. Anywhere they went together would be perfectly fine with him. Okay, so let's try again, right, forward, and... Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest. At this was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him. I'm going to go over the elevator this time is what I'm trying to say. The was simply the place to be, and here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. Door on the left. Yeah, door on the left. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. 
He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. Nah. Nah, 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 nah. Nope. Not happening. Danger! Danger everywhere. Just gibberish. No, stop. Look there on the wall. You see, there's a sign right there. It says, no buckets past this point. Stanley, how could you think it was okay to bring the bucket here? Unless, what if the problem is that you actually don't know what is a bucket and what isn't a bucket? I suppose that would explain a lot about your behavior up to this point. <laughs> if, if that's true, well, my goodness. I think we have to do something about it. This misunderstanding <laughs> could have dire consequences on the entire rest of the game if not addressed quickly and properly. So much of the impact of the story is dependent on your understanding of what is and isn't a bucket. Please, step in here for a moment. Uh, is it going to... Is it going to sass me if I don't... Yeah, let's go then. I'm going to run you through some test scenarios and this is kind of cozy actually or not the thing I'm showing you is a bucket simply enough right this should tell us everything oh, we'll ever need to know about what is or is a bucket okay let's begin item one is this a bucket incorrect it is a hologram of a bucket not an actual bucket Item two, is this a bucket? Incorrect. It is a 3D printed <laughs> creation of a bucket, not an actual bucket. Item three, is this a bucket? Yes. Correct. Hey! This is a bucket. I wanted to say no there actually. Get them all wrong. Item four. Is this a bucket? What? Are you hallucinating? This is a tractor. This was a gimmick. How on earth did you manage to screw it up? Absolutely incredible. Let's just move on to the next one. <laughs> Is this a bucket? <laughs> Correct. This is a bucket. Because it's got a hole in the top, I guess. I don't know. Is this a bucket? Trick question. Both. Gotcha. <laughs> Item... Wait, hold on. I can't find the next one. Let me see. Should be around here somewhere. Okay. You and I both know there isn't anything here. And I don't appreciate the implication that nothing is a bucket when we both clearly know that a bucket is something and therefore nothing could possibly be something. Unless, in your twisted mind, have you somehow convinced yourself that a bucket is nothing? Answer me straight, Stanley. Do you believe that nothing is a bucket? You know what? I'm too confused. <laughs> I've lost all sense of perspective. What is a bucket? What isn't a bucket? Mere moments ago, I could answer these questions with confidence. Can I get through the door now? Now I'm somewhat adrift. Do any of us know what a bucket is? Am I a bucket? Yes. Stanley, I can't keep doing this. I'm losing myself, and myself was all I ever had to begin with. I'm afraid the bucket is threatening to tear our relationship apart. I can't have that. I'm sorry. 
but I'm going to erase all buckets from the game entirely. No! Okay. Here we go. What happened? Is everything gone? Why did everything disappear? Wait. The whole game was a bucket. A bucket? Every single thing in the game was a bucket. Oh my God, I had no idea. How could... Except me. I'm not a bucket after all. And you, Stanley, you're still here. You're not a bucket either. Oh, this is wonderful news. We're not, We're not buckets. buckets. Yes, I actually feel much more at ease right now. It's delightful to get some clarity on that issue, but it doesn't change the fact that we haven't got a game. So, tell you what. I'll reset everything. Jet? And we'll put back all of the buckets, okay? And we'll know that it's all a bucket. But if you run into anyone else, maybe, maybe don't, don't mention, mention that. that. Who knows what that information might do to a person? All right, here we go. Okay, right. Phone call? scheduled either by you or a person in your place of work. The purpose of this message is to warn you about the dangers of recorded messages. If at any time you believe you are listening to a recorded message, please terminate it immediately and cease all flow of information from the recorded message into your perceptual sphere. Thank you and have a pleasant day. Hi. Bucket time. A good bucket. A strong bucket. A humble bucket. A committed bucket. A bucket of culture and distinction. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest. This was not the correct way to the I am running out of breath. And here it comes. No, the bucket is wrong. Was this better? No, never mind. No, no, no. I wonder what happens if I go in there again. The no, we're doing something to different. To the I'm going to resist my temptations. This will be the last thing I do because no. I just so noticed how long I've been recording. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. Shh. Yes. Got a bucket. Good. Said the, Said the bucket. bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something, something I, need I need you to do. You to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't. And he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. In here, said the bucket. Go into this dark room over here. Stanley once again obeyed blindly. There's no dark room. Oh, there is a dark room, right. Now pick up the phone, said the bucket. Pick up the phone, and it will take us back home, where we... Oh, hold on. Why did you um... <laughs> Were you trying to resist the bucket's orders? Stanley, I was joking. Obviously, the bucket isn't talking to you and telling you to do things. Buckets can't talk. It was a joke. Don't you get the joke? It's funny, Stanley. A talking bucket. <laughs> uh, can't you see? Uh, oh, goodness. I must have really bungled up the delivery if you actually took me seriously. Where did I mess up the joke? Should I have paused for longer or spoken quicker? Oh, comedic timing is so difficult. I wish I were better at it. But there isn't exactly an instructional video on comedy that one can watch to fully... Oh, wait, yes, there is. <laughs> um, it's sitting right here. Let's take a look. What is comedic timing? What is comedic timing? How does it work? How long should it last? How can it be used to effectively silence your political enemies? And more importantly... Can it be taught in its entirety within 90 seconds? Thankfully, the answer to all of these questions is yes. Let's dive deeper. If you've ever told a joke or made someone laugh, 
In all likelihood, you did it while standing 50 to 80 centimeters from them in a room of no more than 76 degrees Fahrenheit with one of your arms raised straight upward at a 15 degree angle from your body. These are the optimal conditions for good comedic timing. To begin the joke, start by stating and spelling your name. Next, provide a brief synopsis of the joke, including the specific times at which the recipient of the joke will laugh, and then spell out your name a second time. With these steps complete, it's time to begin the humor. Speak the entire joke in no more than 18 seconds and no less than 13 and a half, pausing only for bathroom breaks when necessary. When the joke has concluded, it is customary to inform your listener that the joke is over by declaring in your loudest possible voice, I'm Dunny with the funny. Let's practice screaming, I'm Dunny with the funny now. Good. This saying is a perfect example of expectations management, which is the cornerstone of good comedy. Finally, it's time to hand out surveys. Collecting hard data from your audience on how rapt they were throughout the joke is the only way to grow or learn as a comedian. An effective survey should be no less than 10 pages long and should include the same question reprinted several times. Just to ensure the survey taker is actually paying attention and not simply filling in answers at random. And that's all there is. With these strategies at your disposal, you'll have audiences doubled over in laughter and even tripled over in laughter in no time at all. Why is it Simpsons Universe people that are laughing though? At some point, you gut busting little scamp. After all, we're each of us needed on the front lines of the war to fight the 12 legged invaders who threaten our very existence and to very likely what? die in a hailstorm of bullets and mandibles. All of us must be prepared to give our lives to this noble cause, just as our children must do after us, and their children after them. Godspeed, and may Earth reign supreme! Hey, goodness, this video is a little outdated, isn't um. it? Well, no matter. I think the fundamentals of proper comedic timing are still as relevant today as they were back then. So with that in mind, I believe the only way forward is for us to return to the two doors and walk through all of this again, so I can try telling my story with more appropriate comedic delivery. Come along, let's head back. Don't know why that gave me a fright. I can feel it. This time, I'm really going to nail the delivery. You'll be in stitches. A talking bucket, you'll say? How ridiculous. How absurd. What a hilarious concept. The king of comedy. That's what you'll call me. Thank goodness we had the instructional video. Otherwise, who knows where we'd be right now? Well, I wouldn't be the king of comedy, that's for sure. The bucket spoke to Stanley. Hmm. The bucket spoke. The bucket spoke. Oh, I'll figure it out on the fly. No need to overthink things. Warehouse isn't open. This is potentially the first time I've had to go backwards for something. <laughs> what happens if I go through the right door? Here we go. You ready? <clears throat> when Stanley and the bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. Well, uh, we're back at the phone already. No, no, no. What's going on? There were supposed to be several rooms leading up to this. There was supposed to be a build-up to this point. A dramatic display of remarkable comedic wit which culminates in this scene with the phone. But now the timing's completely off. The joke will never land. Well, not the way it was meant to. And it's all my fault. I must have forgotten that the phone room comes immediately after the two doors room. What an egregious mistake. I've made a fool of myself. I don't deserve the title of King of Comedy. I'm nothing. I'm not even the lowliest joke telling well. I think. I think I need to go back and rewatch that instruction. Don't be doing it, bro. Again. 
Yes, surely that will help me improve my... Here we go. You ready? <clears throat> When Stanley and the bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. Well, uh, we're back at the phone already. No, no, no. What? What happened? What happened? Here we go. You ready? <clears throat> when Stanley and the bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. Is it just going to keep forcing me to? We're back at the phone already. No, no, no. Here we go. You ready? I guess I have to fuck with the narrator then. Came to a set of two I want you to know, narrator, this isn't me, this is you. Left. No, 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 no. You were supposed to go through the door on the right, leading back to the phone. Did you not even look at the instructional video? I think this is all covered very clearly. There's no way I can make the comedic timing work now. It's done. The joke is completely done and over. It's all your fault, Stanley. I'm going to be ridiculed in the community of other joke writers. I'm going to be shamed at every one of our meetings from now on. All because you couldn't watch a simple video and take a hint. Are you proud of yourself for bringing me down, Stanley? Are you proud? Stanley, you love the bucket so much, it's like you, um, it's as though all of your other most prized possessions pale in comparison. Yes. Well, let me try that again, Stanley. I heard that you are pale with shame over how unabashedly in love with a bucket you are. No? Still not? It, is it the delivery? Pale with shame. Pale with shame? Pale... What's another word to describe a bucket? Stanley, this bucket is so metal, I think I saw it playing guitar. No, 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 no. We're getting away from making fun of Stanley's obsession with the bucket, which was the whole point of this. I just, I'm no good at these jokes. I need more instructional videos. That's exactly what it is. That's what will make me the king of comedy again. More instructional videos. Let's see. Right, that's going to have to do because I've run out of time and that's just too much thinking for me. Meeting room. Yes, that's where everyone would be. Stanley just needed to get to the meeting room and from then on he would never be alone ever again. Does the phone ring again? Let's see if the phone rings and then I'll call it. I can't stop. I'm ridiculous. Ah, the embrace of an old friend. A weathered companionship oh. that stands the test of time. I can do this. Stanley knew the office layout like the back of his hand. It was only a matter of time before he found the others, wherever they were. Just a matter of time. Is she leaving a message for Stanley on not Stanley's desk? Poor Stanley. D I was really expecting more buttons to press because I was getting some. You! Oh, sorry. That'll do it anyway. Good luck, take it easy.